we're teaching from the book Enough, um, a book that um, Mama Dixie and I wrote, Liberating Yourself from Controlling Jezebelic uh, Relationships. And we've been focusing on the uh, tactics, the tactics that are used by someone who is either operating with a, or from a controlling spirit uh, standpoint, as well as behavior. Obviously, if somebody is controlled or bound by a demonic spirit, uh, you know, of control, Jezebel, they are most likely going to have controlling uh, features within their personality. Okay. So we want to understand that the whole purpose in, in, in discussing this is so you understand a couple of things. Number one, that God has not called you ever to be controlled by someone or something else. We have been made as human beings, made in God's uh, image and likeness to not be controlled, okay? We're to be the head, not the tail. We're to operate from a standpoint of dominion over our own life, self-government, okay? And with that in mind, I would like to go to a scripture found in uh, the book of Proverbs, chapter number 25 and verse number 28. Again, Proverbs 25 and 28. And I'm going to read it out of the New Living uh, Translation. You can read it whichever uh, you know version of the Bible you have. It's fine. Uh, it says here, a person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. Again, a person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. So we like to say that, you know, you have to look at your life when you when we, we discuss this um, specifically in the area of uh, boundaries. It is definitely appropriate when we're talking about being controlled by someone else that, again, you're not to be controlled by someone else. It says here that you need to have self-control. Self-control is a type of self-government. You are in control of your mind. OK, uh, your mind uh has you act or, or feel, eat, feel emotions. And then from the emotional or the feelings, we act on things. Okay. So it's all in our court. All right. We can't blame the devil for this, that, and the other. We have to understand that we have more power within us than any demon in hell. And certainly over Satan, he's been crushed already. And the Bible says that he's under our feet. We just need to uh, exercise our authority. However, not everybody is a born again Christian. And even if they are a born again Christian, not every born again Christian is operating from a perspective where their mind has been at least somewhat renewed towards the kingdom of God. They may have come from religious denominations, churches, ministries, um, sat under religious uh, type of uh, institutions or people. And in part, not in totality, but in part, they may have been subjected to a controlling spirit that even may come from the pulpit. And that's why about two or three weeks ago, we started talking about uh, controlling religious type spirits. And you go to YouTube and, and, and look at that one if you haven't seen that already. So we, we in, in many cases, we grew up in a controlling environment, whether it was the church, whether it was our family, family of origin, uh, school. I mean, society at large is controlling, Okay. Uh, you know, if you're not seeing that, then, you know, it's way over your head here. You're missing it somehow. But there's a tremendous amount of control out there. We're not to participate in control. All we're to do is control ourselves. We are not to control other people. All we're to do is dominate everything except people. Okay. That is the kingdom mandate. Okay. So um, when we go back to controlling tactics, we we left off in our discussion last week. We were there were some questions about, um, you know, what about can the can the one that has been controlled can they be so hurt that they can actually uh, start controlling? And the answer is absolutely yes. We also had some. Uh, we left off with this some uh, dialogue around uh, labeling people. Okay, so we'll pick it up there and then we'll we'll, we'll continue. So labeling, yes. Uh, without question, controllers like to use labels and they use labels to frust frustrate you. They use labels to really stir up your emotions. Okay. So these are typically negative words. Okay. 
they're, they're well-timed accusations. And what they do is they create an illusion. They create a picture, an imagination, at least this is the, the strategy of the enemy operating in the host who is deploying uh, behaviors that are unhealthy. It's designed these accusations, these labels, all of this stuff to create a picture that all the fault in the relationship or all the fault in whatever's going on rests entirely on you. Okay. So it, it, even people who have been hurt, okay. Even people that have been controlled, if you don't go through deliverance, if you don't renew your mind, you may find yourself beginning to label or bring forth accusations against other people. Okay. And then what, 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 what people typically do is they start telling all their friends, they start telling their family, they start telling other people in the now new church or ministry that they go to, and they start saying, well, they, they did this, they did that, they're a narcissist, they're a Jezebel, they're an Ahab, or, you know, again, it doesn't matter what the label is, the fact is, is that they will, they will actually label, and all that's designed to, to just take any type of responsibility it's like, it's kind of like this. It's like a person who is in a relationship, again, whatever that relationship is, and has been abused. They have been controlled. They have been, uh, you know, some, some gaslighting occurred, um, some manipulation occurred, whatever it may be. Uh, and, and it could be a husband, it could be a wife. It doesn't matter who it is. And what they do is they say, because out of their hurt, they begin to label those that are hurting them. And they say, well, you know, I know, and if I had a thousand dollars for every person that has told me they know their husband is a narcissist, I'm just amazed at the amount of people that can actually come up with a diagnosis, but yet they have absolutely zero experience in the area. They have absolutely no credibility and they're not certainly not uh, capable of doing that unless perhaps they're a psychiatrist and they've taken somebody through an official test. Now, don't get me wrong. Yes, people can do and do do things that are narcissistic, okay? And they may be a narcissist, but we have to be careful when we start indiscriminately using labels uh, and assigning that label to a specific person because essentially what we're doing is we're demonizing them, okay? And so, again, it doesn't matter what the label is. Narcissist, Jezebel, Ahab, uh, they're, they're, they have a demon or they're demonized. Uh, they're, a, they're a hater. Okay. We, I, hear, I hear that word quite often. They're a hater. You know, and, and you, you're a this, you're a that. Uh, some things I'm just not saying specifically on YouTube because YouTube is governing and they flag. They have, a, they have systems where if you say certain words that I, and I've had it happen to me, uh, they'll either shut you down or send you warnings or you know, just they won't they won't allow you to post your video. So I'm have to be very careful, careful here. But a lot of people use labels against other people. And again, um, it's all designed to really for the controller, it's designed to be a smokescreen. OK, in other words, I, I haven't done anything wrong. OK, we're a good group. We're a good group of people. I'm a good person. It's, you know, and demonize other 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 groups, other people, other classes. Doesn't matter if it's a race, an ethnic class, a, 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 an age uh, grouping, it doesn't matter. They label. Now, again, uh, I have used terms like narcissist or Jezebel, et cetera. But you have to understand, I have well over 30 years in deliverance ministry, actually about 35 ish or so. My wife and I have been doing this. So, you know, we have some experience in this. And when you have experience, uh, especially with those that you're, uh, talking to, you are indeed the expert in the room. So we understand, and, and I don't even like using the terms myself indiscriminately, just because I'm hurt. That would be wrong, okay? And it would be controlling. So you have to be careful if you were controlled that you don't flip it, and now you become the, the, the controller. So they may label you, okay? A controller may label you or you, if it's you're the controller, may label you as a narcissist or a Jezebel, and that's called flipping, okay? And it's designed to get you to kind of, to, to, to coil up and hide and back down from actually helping the person per se, 
uh, get, uh, get some type of deliverance. Okay. So again, uh, that's where, that's where we left off last week. And I wanted to kind of <clears throat> bring closure to that one. Okay. Now, uh, another tactic for uh, controlling a uh, person is to catastrophize, okay? Cata catastrophizing, okay? Now, this happens when someone makes is making like a catastrophe out of every situation, everything. And, and if you've ever been around a person like this who uh, looks to make things seem a lot worse than they are, okay? They become extremely dramatic, Okay. Um, and what they're doing is a controller will use this tactic to project the worst possible outcome that could happen in the situ situation specifically with them. Okay. So uh, we, a common word would be, or a common phrase would be overreacting. A controller will overreact to certain things. So for example, let's just say uh, something, you know, you, you had scheduled something with this person or you, told this person you were gonna to go to something and something came up, it's totally out of your control, perhaps it's an emergency or whatever, okay? And you say, look, you know, I'm either gonna be late or I'm not gonna be there, I'll have to do it another day, what have you. One of the things that they will do is they will make a catastrophe out of the situation that they, you know, they wanted you for, they needed you for. And they're gonna paint a picture that their world is coming down and you're the blame for it now. That's a feature, that is a way, that is a tactic to control other people. They'll overreact so that you uh, begin to feel that, you know, you're responsible. Uh, that's where we, we have a video out there about that. And I'll talk about that also later um, in, in, in our discussion about controlling in weeks to come about being, uh, having false responsibility. Somehow they make it to where you feel that you're responsible, that you have to do it. Listen, at the end of the day, now, it, notwithstanding we help people, but you know what? Again, you're responsible for you. Please do not put your life into the hands of another person, okay? Again, this is some of the dangers that we see in, in, in probably more modern day uh, religion where we look to be covered here. We need to have the, the, a person, a group, uh, a team, or a ministry or church cover us, okay? Uh, I have news for you. You don't need anyone to cover you, okay? You are covered, not only covered, but you are sealed with the Holy Spirit that's been promised to you and you have, okay? <clears throat> so you don't need that. Now, that doesn't mean we don't connect. We do. Doesn't mean we don't have coinity and fellowship and all this stuff. We do and we should, okay? But you don't need that, that covering that modern day religion has expressed to many of you. That puts you in a position to where you actually may be controlled, okay? So again, controllers are highly dramatic and they're, they're, they're always exaggerate. So if a situation happened, they'll paint a picture for you or to you that their world is crumbling. Uh, you know, if they spent a dollar, it becomes a hundred dollars, all right? Uh, they, they have numerous things that they're doing. They have so much going on and they share all this with you. They basically dump on you. Okay. And what that's designed to do is to create a major ball of confusion. Okay. To create like, so much confusion that you, you know, you're kind of wondering, what do I do? What do I not do? And they keep piling it and piling it and piling it. And again, you have to, this is where boundaries kick in because what someone else is responsible for doing, you don't need to do. You know, a lot of people, and they'll, they'll twist scripture, okay? And they'll use the scripture. Many times they'll use this scripture um, that you should, you know, we should carry each other's burdens, okay? Um, and that is, that is, that is biblical, that, that statement, you know, share each other's burdens or share another person's burden. I, what, what has happened, though, is people haven't read the, you know, several verses behind that scripture, where it says, yeah, but let every man carry his own load. And there's a difference in, in, this, in this book. We talk about that in, a, in an area where a, a burden would be like if something happened to you that was out of your control. Like, let's say, for example, in your, in your home, okay, uh, where you live, a tornado, maybe a hurricane, if you're out west, <clears throat> maybe a, a landslide or a fire, 
those things are natural disasters that are totally out of your control. You didn't do anything to, to, to bring that about. So yes, we as a community of believers, we should come to the aid of people like that. We should be there for them. Whatever capacity we can help, we should help. That's a burden, okay? But a load is when you make a decision. When you have made a decision and let's just say, you say, well, I, you know, I'm gonna spend so much money on my credit card or I'm gonna go here and take this vacation. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna quit my job so I can go overseas for a couple months and then come back. And then, you know, all of a sudden now you can't pay your rent, you can't pay your mortgage, your lights are being turned off, your, your bills are behind, whatever. And now you're expecting others to help you. Uh, no, that's, that's not how it works. Okay. That's your responsibility. So we have to be careful that we don't come to the aid of everyone that simply just has a need. Okay. When somebody tells me my, that they have a need, my answer is the same answer that I have to say for myself and my family is my God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Okay. I'm not going to push that on other people like you need to do this, or I would, you know, I would, I want you to do this. So I'm expecting you to, do this. we can't do that. Okay. So, so again, um, a controller will catastrophize things. Uh, write that one down. The sec another one uh, that a controller will uh, use as a tactic is to, to revenge. Now this is a big one, revenge. Controllers are extremely uh, revengeful and they use revenge as a form of vengeance against you to retaliate uh, against something that you did or you did not do, but their perception is, is that you did it, okay? I heard a saying, the other, a statement the other day um, as I was reading something and the person uh, said, and they're an expert in this field uh, of human behavior and emotions and everything. And they said, look, about 50% of everything that someone says is not, is not based on truth. Okay, now we're talking about people that have been in a situation, they've been hurt, they've been victimized, whatever. As they're sharing it, about 50% of everything they're talking about is not based on any truth, okay? We take a, 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 a what is it, uh, a, a molehill and turn it into a mountain, okay? We take something very small and as it bounces against self-limiting beliefs and paradigms and strongholds of fear, worry, um, you know, hurt and pain, wounds that have never been healed and so on, it just becomes bigger in our, our own mind, okay? So again, uh, a controller, there may be some things that you said or did, but they're not necessarily how, you know, it, you see it one way and the controller may see it because again, they catastrophize. It likes, no, it's a major thing. So you didn't call me on my birthday. Oh my goodness, it, it's a major thing. And now there's going to be vengeance against you. So this vengeance, this revenge is based uh, on, on their insatiable need to have preeminence and dominance within the relationship. In other words, they have to be here, you should be there. They're going to put you in your place based on where they want you to be through uh, revengeful uh, tactics, okay? All of this stuff, um, you know, like, like again, you, you, you didn't call them on their birthday. Okay. All right. Now these are grown adults. You didn't call them on their birthday. Okay. So they're going to retaliate with some form of manipulation. Obviously it's controlling and it's designed to get you uh, to, to, to operate against what you really want to do and line up with the controller's agenda. So you have to understand that when this revenge comes, it's not just because they're hurt and they're, you know, they're triggered. And now, you know, they have to express that, 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 that emotion somehow of anger, rage, or who knows what, but it's actually part of the controller's uh, mode of operation to gain dominance over you. Okay. And they want your, your will to line up with what they want. That's what it's all about. Okay. So retaliation uh, this revenge and retaliation, amen, Retali works in a lot of different ways. It can be forceful, it can be very aggressive, or it can, and, and quick, it can like go from here to there, like bam, like that. 
Um, but it can also be very slow. It can be progressive. Okay. And, and there's a lot of different tactics that is used in the revenge of someone who is a controller or retaliating against you. So some of the retaliatory tactics can be sabotage, sabotaging you, uh, gossip about you. Um, many times the, the target, they will target your finances or there'll be financial attacks. And, and what these are designed to do, okay, this sabotage, this gossip, um, uh, financial uh, attacks against you, all of this is, is designed within the spirit of control who is who has the host in bondage and as such is, 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 is behaving in a controlling way. It's designed, it's designed to basically impair your ability to live in a healthy manner. Okay. So if you ever found yourself feeling like you're, you're stuck, like somehow you're in the corner or you're in a room and you can't move your, your mobility has, has been impaired. Okay. That could be, you know, obviously what the controller is setting you up for and the tactic can be revenge. Okay. So it's vindictive, it's vicious. And these attacks can come against, like I said, your, your name. Now, now we see this today again, in, unless you're just walking in the flesh or, and you have bruised emotions, you're, you're hurt, you're wounded, and you're more concerned about uh, uh, fairness and, 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 and everything that's going on in the world, you're, you're probably not going to see this, okay? You're probably not going to see it. But you can see today that finances are being impaired, okay? There's attacks against people, per, their personal property. Uh, there's attacks against, I mean, there's, they're shutting things down just because they don't like what you do. That's the nature of control. It's all designed. And again, forget forget all the, the stuff that's happening out there. Just understand that you can see the control. And I'm trying to make you aware of this stuff. So this stuff just doesn't go over your head and you end up getting into the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the cattle line uh, to, 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 you know, to be killed. Okay. Because this is designed by controlling principalities and the people that participate in it. I want people free just as much, I hope, as you do. Okay. This is not an attack against any, any people. Okay. All right. I'm getting a lot of feedback in my house here. So hold on. Okay. Um, a lot of, a lot of uh, 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 stuff that happens uh, it is obviously a revenge and it's designed to keep you in check, suffocated. So again, if you feel suffocated, maybe you're in a relationship, your husband, your wife, whatever, you feel like you're, you're walking on, on eggshells and you can't say anything, you can't do anything. Okay. And if you do say something, you do something, you do say something, bam, now all of a sudden revenge comes against you. Okay. Uh, I've, I've seen situations in marriages where, um, and I'll just use an example. The, the husband controls all the money, all the credit cards, all the personal uh, identification numbers the, to the accounts and, and so on. And, and, and the wife is like, you know, terrified. She can't spend anything. She work, you know, she looks like she's broke down and everything while the guy's super fly and all this other stuff. And, and again, it's designed. If, if a controller is going to control you, he's going to re put take revenge against you and look to impair your finances or what have you, okay? You have to be careful, you have to not be careful, you need to be discerning. You need to understand this stuff. And again, I know people I was like, well, you know, I didn't, I didn't uh, uh, discern it in the spirit. Okay, you didn't discern in the spirit, but this right here, what we put together is, is designed to where at the very least, you, you should see the red flags in a relationship, okay? Not so you, you know, you don't have your head stuck in the sand somewhere to where it's like, oh, I didn't know. Yeah. Listen, when we when we coach people specifically in relationships and marriages, one of the first things that we ask is this. Where did you meet? What was the what was the connective feature or what was the uh, you, you know, what was what did you feel? How did you kind of go from meeting the person or seeing the person to taking it down the road? And then as you've been dating 
Now these are married folks. I'll say, did you see any red flags? Well, and then I talked to him a little bit more and like, well, yeah, I, I did. I did see a red flag, but yet you blew right through it. Why? Because you don't hear stuff like what I'm telling you. Okay. You don't hear it to this. I'm breaking it down for you. You may hear, oh, you got a controlling spirit, some real high level stuff. And that's why we start labeling people because we don't understand it. Okay. So again, this, this retaliatory revenge, it can be in a lot of different ways, but it's extremely vindictive. Okay. They'll, they'll attack your personal property. They'll steal things. Okay. Gossip, slander, rumors against you, against you, against your family, against your friends. It doesn't matter. All that's designed to bring revenge against you for something that you either did do, okay, or their perception of what you did is something diff different than uh, perhaps even your intention, okay? Doesn't matter. At the end of the day, they're looking to bring about revenge, okay? All right. Another thing, another tactic is a controller will, will ask why. <laughs> write that one down. Okay. Now I want to be clear as I, as I go into this, asking somebody why doesn't mean you're a controller or somebody asking you why doesn't mean they're a controller. That's why you need to study it. That's why you need to discern it. That's why you need to have the revelation of it. Okay. But one of the things that, uh, one of the tactics that a controller will use is asking why, why did you do your part? Why, why were you late? Why didn't you call me? Why, 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 why? Now, some of you may understand what I'm talking about because you've experienced this thing about why weren't you here? Why didn't you call me? Why didn't you text me? Why didn't you return my text? Why, 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 why? Now on the surface, again, it seems like a legitimate question, okay? And they could certainly be, all right? But with a controller, it can also be a tactic that's used to bring you into more control, okay? So control, ask, asking why uh, from a controller is designed to accomplish two primary things. One, it's designed to gain information, okay? Remember, a controller will, will, will have some type of reconnaissance, okay, or information gathering about you, they want, they want information, okay? Because they wanna know your business, they wanna know your personal you know, views on things, they wanna know about your dreams and they wanna know about this and they wanna know about that. That's designed to either hold for later so you it could be used as an attack against you, but it's certainly designed immediately to bring about some type of dominance in the relationship. So that's one of the reasons they may ask why. And then of course, the other thing is uh, in asking why is that when you say, well, this is what happened or, oh, well, this is what I did. I'll give you a good example. You bought a car and you like this car. Um, it's maybe a car of your dream. You've always wanted it. And you stretched yourself a little bit. You said, you know what? No, I want this car. And your payment is a payment that is, you know, up here and, and may blow somebody else away. They, they can't even fathom having a payment like that. Okay. And you say, and they say, Oh, I see you got a car. Oh, it's nice. Yada, yada, yada. And you're like, yeah, I really went. Uh, what did you pay for it? Uh, what, what's your, what's your payment? What's your monthly payment? Oh, my monthly payment is 600 bucks. Why did you get a payment of $600? Okay, now that's designed to now have, have, from a controller's perspective, that's designed to remind you based on who they think that they are or they're projecting themselves to be, that you made a bad decision, why? Because all their decisions are right, okay? It, it's designed to somehow get you to feel that you don't know what you're doing or that you are a terrible person for doing what you did, okay? All part of the controller's operation and tactics to get you to a place of devalued self, to bring you down to a low self-esteem. You follow me, okay? So again, you probably said, well, this happened, that happened, and the person's not a controller. Well, 
Maybe they are, maybe they're not. I, I don't know. I don't know the situation. Okay. But you have to understand that when this happens, you need to be, you know, be harmless as a dove, but be wise as a serpent. You need to be very wise. Okay. Read about snakes, study how snakes monitor, watch things. A snake may, may, may watch for a very long time before they ever move. Okay. What have you. So you need to understand this stuff. Okay, that's why we're bringing it to you. Now, now, the other thing is when we talk about asking why, asking why is also many times combined with sarcasm. Now, sarcasm is something I can really talk on and, and because I was extremely sarcastic, okay? I grew up, okay? Um, my sister knows. My mother, bless her, God bless her, she's deceased now, but my mother was sarcastic, little sarcastic digs here and there, not necessarily about me, but about things, or maybe it was about me or whatever, sarcasm. And sarcasm is an excellent way of saying something hurtful without taking any responsibility for it. It's these little digs. It's, it's sarcastic. It's kind of like he, he, ha, 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 sarcasm designed by a controller to make you feel again, feel worthless or inferior. Now, why do you feel worthless or inferior? Well, because your mind still has some type of stronghold or a paradigm within the subconscious that has been conditioned somehow, some way where your thought about you deep within is worthless or inferior. Okay. Now the enemy has been studying you all your life. So he knows how to, 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 to manipulate you, how to get you into a position and bring about a controller into your life to release words or whatever of sarcasm. And now again, that takes you further down the rabbit hole of worthlessness, inferiority, low self-esteem, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So a controller will use uh, uh, sarcasm to gain superiority in the relationships, little jabs, little digs. Okay. Um, my wife always uses the term digs. You know, it's that, that was a little dig. That's a dig again, little by little jabs, 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 preparing you for the knockout punch to get you to a place of depression, insecurities, uh, perhaps a bondage. Perhaps you go on the path of, you know, uh, get into drugs, alcohol, sexual addictions, shopping addictions, relationship addictions. I mean, could this thing, this thing could go deep. Okay. But again, these are sarcastic remarks. Okay, now they could be they could be little things. Uh, you're not the sharpest knife in the drawer. Okay, so you did something, you said something. Maybe you were wrong in what you said. Whatever. We always say we can all say wrong things. Big deal. All right. Let's not trip over that. But a, a, it could be a sarcastic remark like, "Well, you're certainly not the sharpest knife in the drawer." Okay, don't fall for that sarcasm. Again. Down the road, we'll get into it. If you want to go into it now, because I don't know when we'll get to it, get the book. And in the back, it talks about things you need to do, about 15, 16 things, not more. I think it's 19 that you need to do to break free from controlling spirits and controlling people. What do you do? Okay. And, and one of the things you do is you obviously have to have boundaries. And one of my boundaries is, is that if somebody is sarcastic or crit criticized, uh, criticized me, bam, my boundary kicks in and I have to do something. I have to take action for me, not for them, but for me, so that that boundary is no longer violated. Okay. All right. Uh, another thing is timing. Okay. Write that one down. Timing. <clears throat> so a, con a control, another controlling tactic would be timing. Okay. So a controlling person, again, by now you understand person's bound, person's controlling. Okay. All right. They'll, they'll, they'll text you. They'll, they'll take their phone. Uh, they'll text you. They'll call you. Uh, heck I've had people show up my door. Okay. Ring the doorbell. All right. Late at night. Okay. Call late at night. Maybe you're watching, um, your favorite show. Maybe you're watching the football game or whatever it is that you like. Maybe you're reading a book study time. You're at school. You want to study a controller will use the most inopportune times to begin to express their feelings about something you did 
uh, something you said, uh, they, they're going to express that towards you. It, it, it again, uh, they're looking to most likely create an argument or have you become angry, trigger some anger and frustration and bam, next thing you know, you're in a full blown argument. Okay. The rabbit hole can deep, go deep. Next thing you're fighting, you're throwing punches, slapping, pulling hair, scratching, whatever it is. Okay. Again, a controller will text you, show up at your door, knock on your bedroom door while you're focused or you want to be focused on doing what you like to do or what you even what you must do. Okay. Right before you have an appointment, you need to go to the dentist. You have an appointment. You're getting ready to walk out the door. Bam. Controllers right there. You're driving all of a sudden, ding, ding. You get a text from the controller. Okay. It's designed to, to, you know, it's, it's when you least expect it, right? You least expect it. And it's all designed to wear you down. All these things, these tactics, you know, it's not like a controller has one tactic. I'm giving you some in the book. I don't know how many we express, maybe 20, you know, 25 tactics. I can't remember how many we put in the book, but there's, there's hundreds. There's many more that we could talk about. Okay. Some of you have some that you could share with us. Okay. But it's all designed to wear you down. All this stuff is designed to wear you down, to exhaust you, okay, and put you into a place of stress. And you know what stress does? It kills you, okay? All of it's designed to, this is why the mind must be renewed. Because if you don't have a, you don't have your mind renewed, okay, and you're always working on it the rest of your life, and these, these paradigms of these strongholds don't get dealt with, in other words, those thoughts bound, the imagination's cast down, and now think on the things that are of good report, there's always going to be something. There's always going to be the trigger. Because you're emotionally, if you're not free yet, you're emotionally connected to the thought, whatever that thought may be. It's most likely a toxic thought. You're emotionally connected to it, okay? And, and with that emotional connection, okay, the controller is going to come in and hit that emotion, that wound, that hurt, based on your thoughts of the past. Man, I got, I got, I got something I can share with you down the road that just blow your mind. But uh, again, we're so focused on what happened previously. We're in the past in our thoughts. Now controller comes in, bam, and gets you. Okay. Then you go into your, the, the, the emotion triggers chemicals, begins to get things down to, at, you know, and go through your body. This is why when you're stressed, you feel it. When you're angry, anger is a secondary emotion, or, fr or you're frustrated, or you're depressed, you feel it. Your body feels it, okay? Your body begins to act things out. You're sending signals from the mind and emotions to your body. Emotions and body work like this. They work like that. And what, they're, what it will happen is you become stressed out. Now, at the cellular level, you begin to become potentially toxic or septic in the set at the cellular level. And therefore, heart attacks, disease, diabetes, obesity, um, you know, <laughs> uh, I mean, cancer, uh, uh, fibromyalgia, uh, what's the new one that people talk about? Uh, Hashimoto, uh, you know, there's so many different things, tons and tons of things, neurological type diseases and stuff like that. Why? Because in, 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 our, in our conversation, a controller, you know, who, who feels that they're hurt, they, you know, the injustice and all this other stuff now comes, looks to control you, taps into something, some thought, taps into some wound that's still open or reopens the wound or what have you, bam, next thing you know, you begin to feel it physically and you feel it physically. Next thing you know, we're now trying to cast demons out of, of all your different systems, skeletal system, muscular system, endocrine system, all this stuff. We're trying to get all this stuff out. Why? Because the mind is bound in a certain area and a controller has come in and tapped into all that stuff. And then we're saying, but I love him. I love her. Yeah. Oh, no man, anything but to love him. But be, to be loved doesn't mean you don't have boundaries. that says no. A matter of fact, I would say that if you don't have boundaries, how are you generally going to love? Again, I gave you the scripture. Okay. You need to understand that you need to have self-control and nobody controls you. If, you allow yourself to go without boundaries or without self-control. You are like a city without walls 
that's easily overtaken. Your life will be overtaken. By who? The enemy, Satan, the deceiver, okay? The accuser, the one that opposes you. So our goal in talking about all this stuff is, is to get you free, to help you. You should, be, you should be living up here, not down here. Ah, man, you're gonna have problems, I get it. Everybody's gonna have problems, all right? Say hello to problems, but so what? You get through that. You don't stay in, in, in this place of, of familiarity where it's like, oh no, pity me, poor me, self-pity and all this stuff. So again, all right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Diabetes, migraines, good one there. Thank you. <clears throat> Hashimoto's, okay. Five, Hashimoto's is a new thing, right? It's a new thing, okay? Uh, a decade ago or so, it was fibromyalgia, okay? So we're always, we're always, you know, always new diagnosis, always this, always that, whatever. And the enemy's hammering, 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 hammering. No, it's time for you to rise up and know who you are in Christ, the kingdom in you, okay? And then begin to know, I'm, I'm, no, I'm getting free. You know, you know, at least, you know, I know some people that, that they say, okay, look, I need help. And they'll come, they'll get the coaching, they'll get the deliverance and all that stuff from us or maybe somewhere else. But what we're talking about right here, right now, and, and that's good. And yes, it does take time. You don't turn a battleship on a dime. It takes time to get free because it's not just about put some oil on your hand that you got at all these putting your hands on somebody or dousing them or doing whatever you do or have some type of billow or whatever. It does, that's cool. I'm good with that. But at the end of the day, we can, we can shoo all your demons away, but your mind has to be renewed. You have paradigms. Everybody on this call today has a paradigm, many paradigms. And paradigms control your life. So we need to renew the mind. Very simple, okay? Very simple if I were stating it, we need to renew our mind very difficult to actually do because you have to say to yourself, I need to start all over again, or I was wrong in this area. Okay. I was connected to things that were foul and wicked. I didn't know it. Okay. I have people right now I'm thinking about that. I'm, I'm talking to and I'm ministering to, to get, to get free from the effects of religious control and bondage. Okay. But at least they're, they're, they're getting the help. The worst thing to do is think that nah, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm fine. Yeah, you are good. You're, 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 you're 100% good. Matter of fact, I'll even say you're perfect in the spirit. But where do you live? You live on planet Earth. You're a physical being. You have a soul, mind, will, and emotions. And that needs to be dealt with. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll go maybe one or two more, and then I'll uh, take a look at your questions or comments. Okay. So another thing... Um, controllers uh, use or tactics they use is they cast guilt, casting guilt. This, this one's big. Okay. <clears throat> casting guilt. So a controller will always look to cast guilt on the one they're looking to control or what they're looking to control. Okay. And guilt, casting of guilt is designed to guilt you into giving them what they want. <clears throat> what they want. Okay. Remember, it's all about the controller. You're not important. And if they make you or they try to butter you up, it's designed down, down the road to control you in something else. You have to be careful. You have to be discerning. Okay. But casting guilt, um, one of the things that a controller will do is they'll manipulate scripture. Okay. Uh, we're talking about now Christians, they, they, they're notorious actually for manipulating scripture and then they'll share that, okay, scripture with you to bring about guilt to get you to do something they want. So they may say something that, you know, uh, God told you, you know God told you to do this for me, but you were disobedient. Or uh, they'll say something like, um, and I think I mentioned this maybe last week or to somebody that, you know, God says, or the word of God says that if I ask you for, or your brother asks you for your coat, you should give him your cloak also, okay? Implying that you should basically give the shirt off your back to them. So they'll twist and wrangle scripture and manipulate you. And of course, that scripture says that, but that's, you have to understand 
why and the meaning, what's it really talking about, okay, in that in the context of the text. Again, content or context, not pretext. Okay. So casting guilt in that manner is really it's it's we could call it projection as well. It's controlling narcissistic Jezebelic projection. It's witchcraft. It could be religious control as well, but casting guilt, having you to feel guilty, okay, even shameful for that matter, uh, dirty, is designed so that you say, you know what, I owe this person, I must do it. And, and, and they'll get you to think that somehow you can make amends, that if you do this, then everything will be okay. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. If you don't forgive others and definitely forgive yourself, you're going to be constantly from with a controller. You're going to constantly, they're going to pull you back to the past and try to have you make amends with the past. Okay. Listen, we repent for things that we've done to other people. At least we should. And we should certainly go to them and say, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, but you don't need to stay there. Okay. This guilt casting and, you know, well, yeah, but why, again, here we go, asking why, well, why, why, this, that, and the other, guilt, 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 and you've, you've repented, you've, you've, you've apologized, you know, you, you've done tons of different things, but when it's necessary, a controller will pull it right off the shelf and deploy that against you and bring you right back, okay, projecting all of this shame, blame, guilt, uh, low self-esteem, project all of this stuff on you. It's all designed to keep you into a place or, you know, of submission to them. Okay. And again, these are people that you potentially love. Part of your family. You could be your husband or your wife. Could be your brother or your sister. Could be your mom or your dad. Could be your son or your daughter. Okay. Doesn't matter who. You, it's not about who, it's about what. It's about who, what, it, it's about what and why. Understanding. Solomon said, in all, you're, in all you're getting, get understanding. You have to understand the matter. That's why we do what we do. That's why we coach. That's why we write books. That's why we have teachings and so on to help you. And you don't get it in one hour, okay? This is a journey, Okay. All right. Um, let me let me give you one more, and then then I'm gonna check the, the board here. Okay. Uh, confusion. Controllers love confusion. They love to play play mind games. Okay. Narcissistically induced, Jezebelically inspired mind games. All of its design this confusion, once again, to bring you into submission to their dominance and preeminence, okay? They love strife. They love to see you stressed, and, it, and they use confusion to do it. The Bible says in James chapter 3, verse number 16, for where there's envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. So you're in a relationship with someone and there's always envy or there's always strife. There's confusion. The Bible says in every evil work, it's that's demonic. But yet we just think it's going to push, go away. We run here, we run there and push, we think it's going to vanish. It's the magic wand effects. Give me the pill. Where's the pill? Can't I just take the pill? Everybody wants a shot. No, what about walk by faith, not by sight? Why not know who you are, okay? And begin to deal with you. And as you deal with you, it expands and it expresses out of you. And it has impact or effect or influence with other people. Once you know who you are, controllers, you know, let me, let me say this. Thinking about this the other day. Jesus said at one time, he said, look, the, you can't do anything, but the, and the enemy is coming for me. I'm paraphrasing. The enemy is coming for me, but he's going to find nothing in me. Hmm. 
I, I love that because what that's that, that's for us as well. The enemy is always going to come, but what does he find in you? See, if he can't find anything in you to connect with or to use, I should say, to be the pathway for demonic bondage and or, you know, hurts and wounds and all this stuff, how's he going to control you? How? So I like to say this way is that, and and again, this isn't condemning to anyone. It's for me as well, that when we're in a place of bondage or we're in a place where we're stirred up and frustrated, we can't seem to break it, this and this, that, and the other, you have to ask the question, what's in me? See, we're always looking at out there, what's happening out there, what's happening in the world, what's this group doing, what's that group doing, what's my family doing, what's the, my mom and dad doing, what's this, what's my, no, 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 stay in your lane, deal with you and say, what is here that gives the enemy the opportunity, not only the opportunity, but gives the enemy the inroad, because again, there's no illegal access. Okay, we can't say, well, the enemy's operating illegally. No, he's not. He's, he, 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 he can't do whatever he wants, okay? All he can do is deploy deception. It's up for you to take the bait, okay? You have to take the bait. And you have to ask yourself, yourself the question, what's going on? And you're gonna find out that the mind is not thinking right in a certain area. You know, nobody's ever told you this. Nobody's ever told you to how to think. What class did you take in school or college or university that actually told you how to think? Now they told you what to think, but they didn't tell you how to think. How many of you grew up in a family where your mom and dad sat you down and expressed and, t- and educated you throughout your early childhood development years and said, this is how you think? No, they told you what to think, okay? And honestly, Tell me a church you went to or a ministry you connected to, and there may be some, don't get me wrong, there may be, and I hope you did, that told you how to think. Remember, Jesus said, be careful how you hear. He didn't say, be careful what you're hearing. He said, be careful how you hear. In other words, when somebody says something, how are you hearing it? I, you could, you could, You could tell somebody you love them. How are they hearing that? Are they hearing that, oh, you're just saying that because you want something from me? Based on a hurt, you see what I'm saying? Good stuff, right? So again, controllers use confusion, okay? Uh, They're not gonna give you a straightforward answer to something. You can ask a question. They're not gonna give you a straightforward answer. They're gonna have you running all around, like a dog chasing his tail. You're all over the place, okay? Agitating you, frustrating you. It's all designed to, to, to bring you to a place where you're just stressed out. You cannot have a rational discussion. They will flip it. They will take other tactics and so on. And at the end of the day, you're going to be blamed. They're going to say, you're the one that causes the confusion. You're the demon. Have you ever heard of word salad or word salading? You know, people use word salads. So, you know, their their speech, their form of speech will basically bring about confusing uh, 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 views about something. They'll use random words. They'll use phrases. All of this is designed to leave you in a state of confusion. Amen. So, so I hope that what we shared here today is blessing you. And take this again. Get the book, okay? I think it's like 12 bucks or something like that. Amazon, download it for, for less than that. Or come to our website and get it. But get the book so you can take notes and all that stuff and have it. Share it with somebody else. Buy one, give it to somebody else, okay? Give it to your family members. Wouldn't that be nice? Oh, and then, of course, you know, you make, well, I don't agree with this. That's fine. I mean, fight with people. Let God, one sows, another one waters, God brings the peace. Okay.